Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Zoom church this morning. Let's start in the way that we always start these days, by giving one another our Zoom wave. It is lovely to see you all and just um, a couple of pieces of, of church <coughs> family news to share with you. Um, some of you may remember Graham and Carter's friend. Um, I'm sorry to say that Graham has died. Um, and so we send to Anne and to Graham's family our, our love and best wishes. But on a, a, a more positive note, I understand that Shirley is doing well after her operation, so that's good. And Pat Gore is also doing uh, much better um, in hospital, so that's also good news. I just wanted to share those things with you. And now um, I'm delighted to welcome to lead our Zoom worship this morning, our very own Jeff Coleman, and I'm going to now hand over to him. Good morning. It's a privilege, a pleasure and a responsibility to be leading worship with you all this morning. Let us praise God, for he is worthy to be praised. Let us pray. Praise be to you, creator, father God, for the glory of all that you have made. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus, for you have shown us love and given us hope. Praise be to you, Holy Spirit, for you enable us to grow in love and righteousness. Our first hymn is a hymn of praise in which we recall all that God has done for us, that he is with us on our journey through life. In the last verse, we end with pleas to God for ourselves and for this suffering world. The hymn is God with us, creator, father. With us, Creator, Father, bringing everything to birth, Mother of the whole creation, fire of stars and light of earth. Down the countless years composing, from the earth's evolving night, love's response to love and warming light and soul. With us, Redeemer, brother, friend, forever at the side. Here in flesh you walked among us, taking up your cross to die. Crucified, despised, rejected, perfect love who shed our shame, streaming from your cross, your judgment, Unwearied spirit from the birth of time and space, surging through unconscious being, joyful life creating grace. Through the centuries you find us, you as God inspired our breath, light and power as work within us. closest friend, unfailing guide, through the ages wronged, confronted, in your bowl still crucified. God with us, convict, forgive us, by your holy love, destroy all that hinders peace and justice, fill this aching world with Today, uh, the 1st of November, is widely celebrated as All Saints Day, 
when we remember all those who have gone before us, who have set examples of Christian lives in harmony with God. It gives us an opportunity to remember those who have helped us in our journey to faith and those all over the world who have suffered and are suffering simply because they are Christians. Our prayer is based on the first two verses of Hebrews chapter 12. Let us pray. With a great cloud of witnesses around us, we try to run the race that lies ahead. Help us, God of truth, to lay aside every weight and the sin that restricts our movement. Forgive us for the times when we have failed to clothe ourselves in love and enable us to fix our eyes on Jesus, in whom we have found our hope. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 34, verses 1 to 10, which we're going to read together, reading the responses in bold type in our own homes. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, and Frida is going to read to us. Hear the extraordinary, breathtaking and hope-instilling words of Jesus, as we find them at the beginning of what has come known to us as the uh, Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 12 and I'm reading from the New International Version. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say 
all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus was teaching his disciples and started with the sentences we know as the Beatitudes. The disciples would have known the Ten Commandments, four do's and six don'ts, seven if you count not making graven images, and much of the rest of the law from the first five books of the Bible. But this was different. It wasn't about what they should do and shouldn't do. It was about the sort of people that they could be and should be. I wonder, was what Jesus had to say something a bit like sociology, describing how people react to various sorts of behavior? Some of the book of Proverbs seems a bit like that. You know, for example, if you show mercy and kindness to people, will, will, pe will other people show you mercy and kindness? Or was it theology, describing how God views various sorts of behavior? You know, the idea that God rewards the humble. Or was Jesus making promises to his disciples about the rewards they would receive for behaving in certain ways, for becoming the sort of people who behaved in those ways? Or was it something more enigmatic, more like a parable? Let's think about it. Were the, sermon, were the words of Jesus at the start of the Sermon on the Mount sociology? Theology, promises, or something else? Maybe advice, maybe instructions. Maybe more importantly, how well do our lives match the lives of those that Jesus described as blessed? Maybe, just maybe, Jesus was encouraging his disciples to take a leap of faith. Much like the psalmist in Psalm 34, verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Maybe he was inviting them to try out living in God's way, humbly, self-effacingly, with a craving for righteousness, fairness, justice and peace. And he was indicating that by so doing, they would experience the blessings of living close to God and of seeing other people and the world around them with God's eyes. Maybe Jesus invites us to do just the same. Let's pray in our response to the gospel lesson. Let us pray. Jesus. Remembered on the mountainside, teaching the people near you as you look beyond to a world of need. Help us to hear your call today. Turn us outwards beyond ourselves. Help us to see as clearly as you do the needs that we could meet. Stir in us a hunger and thirst for justice to be done and a readiness to live simply that others may simply live. Grant us courage to face the bitterness resentment and misunderstanding that can come from following you. Inspire us to be heralds of your kingdom and instruments of your love for the sake of the God who accepts us and grants us life in all its fullness. Amen. Our third set reading for All Saints Day is from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, the vision of St. John. And Grace will read it for us. I'm reading from the New International Version. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people and language, 
standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels standing round the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. Saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. In some parts of the Christian church, particularly Catholic and Orthodox traditions, some people are classed as saints and some aren't, with processes for deciding who is and who isn't. Many feel as Protestants, we probably don't take that view. Anybody can become a saint. Anybody can be a saint. Not all the saints of the New Testament time were, that were completely squeaky clean all the time. Do you remember Peter rebuking Jesus and Jesus saying, get behind me, Satan, to him? And Peter going on after Jesus was captured in Gethsemane to deny his allegiance to Jesus three times before the cock crowed. Remember Paul as Saul actually rounding up Jesus' followers for persecution and holding the coats for the mob who stoned Stephen to death? Our belief is that by the grace of God, Anyone who turns to Jesus in faith may be saved from their previous life and by the working of the Holy Spirit as they seek to live Christian lives may be perfected by God into what he wants them to be, what he wants us to be. In Matthew's Gospel, the teaching of Jesus starts with the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount but ends with the parable of the sheep and the goats. How we behave towards other people in the lives we lead in the light of God is at the beginning and the end of the teaching. Maybe the Beatitudes were a bit like the introductory lecture outlining a course. And in the parable, there were some hints about what the final exam will be like. We may have heard the story of one particular saint, the patron saint of travellers, and a shortened version is on the Worship from Home sheet. Jan is going to tell us a slightly different version. Once upon a time, a thief, a robber, and a giant known as Christopher, or Reprobus, as he was originally named. He was a fierce man, who dedicated his life to seeking the most powerful prince to serve. At first, he believed that this was the devil, a being feared by men. But eventually, he came to believe that Christ was the greatest of all princes. After being instructed in the Christian faith by a hermit, he was baptised and given the name Christophorus. The hermit who instructed Christopher gave him the task of carrying travellers across a local river, a job easily done because he was of great size and strength. One day he began to help a child across the river, carrying the boy on his shoulders. Gradually he began to feel a weight so great that he was bow down by it. Once they reached the other side, the child said to Christopher, don't be surprised, Christopher. You were not only carrying the whole world, you had him who created the world upon your shoulders. Thank you. Our final hymn is a well-known one singing the first five verses of For All the Saints.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, across the ages you have called women and men to follow you and to walk in the way of righteousness and truth. Hear us as we pray for all seeking to follow you, especially those for whom discipleship presents difficulties and those who miss the fellowship of conventional worship. Hear us as we pray for those in danger, for those suffering and those seeking to help them, for those who are lonely, afraid, anxious or carrying heavy loads. Those needing to make difficult decisions. Hear us as we pray for those who mourn. And as we pray for those people and situations that each one of us wants to bring to you, we pray also for ourselves. Let's say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Would you like to join me in saying a well-known prayer? Prayer of St. Teresa of Avila. Christ has no body now on earth but ours. No hands but ours, no feet but ours. Ours are the eyes through which the compassion of Christ must look out on the world. Ours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Ours are the hands with which he is to bless his people. May it be so. Amen. Jeff, can I thank you for leading us in our All Saints worship this morning? And in a moment, as has become our custom, we'll go into virtual coffee groups. So thank you to you all for joining us this morning. Thank you to those who've done the technical things all behind the scenes. Uh, please stay on if you are joining us for coffee. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. <laughs>